Good morning, quest for you, friends. Fall has arrived here in Northern California. I know, I know, fall started on September 22nd this year, which is almost two months ago. For me, fall didn't arrive until this weekend. I stretched summer out as long as possible. I still wore open-toed shoes and short sleeve shirts. I left my house without a jacket, and I sat on my balcony soaking up the still warm sun on Saturday afternoons. But this past weekend, I woke up to a chilly apartment, my nose cold, shivering as I got up. For a moment I thought I was getting sick, but then I looked at the temperature inside. And when I saw 63 degrees on the display, I realized it is cold. So I turned the heater on, got a sweater out of the closet. I baked some acorn squash and I drank a lot of hot tea. I officially welcomed fall. And now I also notice the leaves changing colors everywhere. And I just have to remember to pack my jacket when I leave my house. Autumn is the season of the harvest, when we reap what we planted in the spring. It is the time to gather what nature grew for us all summer when we were out having fun in the sun. I love going to the farmer's market during the fall crisp morning air, the rich and colorful vegetables, tougher fruits like apples, pomegranates and persimmons, all of which I love. Fall, with its colder weather, always means more reflection. Maybe with the cooler and drier air comes more clarity of vision, or maybe just more time is spent inside. I felt it this past weekend. I just really needed to be at home. I felt the need to ready my place for the winter when I will be spending more time in here. There will be fewer climbing trips, some of which will get replaced by skiing trips, but not all, way too expensive. And I also spent time thinking about Quest for You this weekend. My wish with these episodes is that they become part of your day. That is why I record five of them for you, so you have them Monday through Friday. I keep the topics independent of each other so you don't have to worry about missing something and can catch up in any order you like. Remember those daily tear-off calendars that had quotes on them? Do they still exist? I used to love them. Even as a kid, the first thing in the morning was going to the calendar to rip off the previous day and look at the new day in whatever little piece of wisdom the back contained. I want to be that daily companion for you. I realize, just like those calendars, not all episodes will be of interest to you. But if you make it a routine and you start your days with quest for you, I will feel you'll get the most out of it. I try to cover topics that apply to all of us, challenges we all deal with, behaviors we want to change, motivation that we may need, ideas and inspiration for the next steps forward. And sometimes I may just be good company because I talk about things you can relate to as well. So far, I have left my episodes stand on their own. Sometimes I've referenced them when I covered a certain topic before. But I think what I want to do going forward is to bring them together on Fridays. I publish episodes Monday through Friday. Most of them come out the night before, sometimes the morning off. This gives you the weekend to catch up if needed. But I thought about bringing the topics I covered during the week together a little bit on Friday. Not summarizing or repeating them, but weaving them together. Maybe with a poem or a short story. Or a few tips or action items you can implement right away. I see it in my own life. So much of what I consume, especially when I'm in the car where I can't take notes. I forget. I mean to take action on things that resonate with me, but I simply cannot remember them all. So maybe a summary episode every Friday will help you be reminded of some of the topics we talked about. And I promise I will make it creative. It won't be a rundown of things I previously said. I'm not exactly sure yet how, but I will test out and see how it goes. And I'll look for your feedback. As always, I would love to hear what is working for you and what you would like to see more of. 
that helps me improve and be more effective on my quest to help you. So today, we shall begin. I have a short story for you that really spoke to me when I read it. It's by Paolo Coelho, and I found it on his blog, which I read from time to time. It's titled, The Time Between Sowing and Harvesting. Our episode on security came to mind when I read it. It's a story about accepting the journey, the duration things take, an appropriate topic for this season that is all about harvesting. But our life is the same way. We plant seeds all the time, but we want them to ripen the next day. Things take time. Our insecurities won't disappear overnight. I proposed seeing our insecurities in others first, because sometimes we don't detect them within ourselves. This may not only help us bring clarity, but it also builds a connection with other humans. I also spoke about energies, which to me connects nicely with the topic of insecurities. Some people with insecurities are part of our life and can really be a drain on our energy. Take your time with those people as well. Give them a chance, but if their energy continues to be negative, increase the distance. I have a friend that I needed to do that with. Ripening time is a wonderful time to listen, which was also a topic this week. More and more, I discover the power of listening. And I think when we are so immersed in action, we sometimes forget to listen. While you wait for your project to take off, or for a friend to respond to your email, take time to listen. There are subtle messages, even in silence. And sometimes, silence is more powerful than words anyway, especially with those insecure people that exhaust our energy. So, my friends, enjoy this short post from a master storyteller and take this message with you into your weekend. Give it time. Watch your efforts grow and unfold. Sometimes it's hard to see, and then you give it even more time. Eventually you will notice the changes. Your diet, your harder workouts, your time invested with people, your own business, it will all pay off one day. You will harvest the fruits of your investment. Here goes, the time between sowing and harvesting. Do not try to make the road shorter, but travel it in such a way that every action leaves the land more fertile and the landscape more beautiful. Do not try to be the master of time. If you pick the fruit you planted too early, it will be green and give pleasure to no one. If, out of fear or insecurity, you decide to put off the moment of making the offering, the fruit will have rotted. Therefore, respect the time between sowing and harvesting, and then await the miracle of the transformation. Until the wheat is in the oven, it cannot be called bread. Until the words are spoken, they cannot be called a poem. Until the threads are woven together by the hands of the person working them, they cannot be called cloth. When the moment comes to show others your offering, they will be amazed and will say to each other, there is a successful man because everyone wants the fruit of his labors. No one will ask what it costs to produce those fruits because anyone who does his work with love fills his creation with such intensity that it cannot be perceived by the eyes. Just as an acrobat flies easily through the air with no apparent effort, success, when it comes, seems the most natural thing in the world. Meanwhile, if anyone did dare to ask, the answer would be, I considered giving up. I thought God was no longer listening to me. I often had to change direction and, on other occasions, lost my way. Despite everything, though, I found it again and carried on because I was convinced there was no other way to live my life. I learned which bridges could be crossed and which should be burned. So much love, my friends, and I can't wait to talk to you again.